Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? Okay, Brian, let's go. We got another Breeders' Cup show, our third one in the series. Lots to talk about today. Yeah, we're going to go to all 14 races. We're going to start in the order that the run Friday would be first, of course, Matt. Friday is eight days away now. We're getting close. Let's look at the first race on Friday, the first Breeders' Cup race on Friday. I believe it's race six at Del Mar on uh, Friday. It will be the Juvenile Turf Sprint, five furlongs, Matt. We're doing our top picks. We're doing our top long shots. I want you to go first with your top pick. We are in the Juvenile Turf Sprint. I am going with what will probably be the favorite in the race with Governor Sam. He has just been uh, uh, dominating four wins in a row. His recent win was in the Indian Summer at Keeneland, which has been a very productive prep race for this juvenile turf sprint in its short history. Yeah, you're going Americans. I'm going Euros. Uh, last year, trainer Mick Appleby brought a uh, five furlong horse named Big Ebbs over. This year, he brings Big Mojo, uh, big turn of foot for this five furlong horse from Europe. Uh, I think he probably is a little bit classier than any of the Americans. He'll be my top pick. Uh, he'll have to, we probably won't break on top, so we'll have to uh, uh, get a little racing luck, but I like Big Mojo best in the juvenile turf sprint. Your top long shot, Matt? My top long shot, and I'm going with your idea of having a horse coming off the pace. I am going without on bail for uh trainer mike maker um this uh this horse has run second behind governor sam in uh, his last two races before that he was a stakes winner at saratoga i just don't like the europeans uh in these turf sprint races uh, i just think that they are not fast enough and i like the internationals here and i like the fact that they'll be getting firm turf i think it'll help big mojo i think it'll also help ikoro sieg ikoro sieg is a japanese runner actually a son of twirling candy who we're all familiar with uh two for two two sharp wins on firm turf ikoro sieg from japan will be my top long shot in the juvenile turf sprint all right matt we're going to go to a little bit longer races here let's get back to the dirt Mile and 16th, the Juvenile Phillies on Saturday. Juvenile Phillies uh, kicking off with, uh, uh, for me, uh, immersive three for three in her career for Brad Cox with uh, very nice wins in the Alcibiades in Kentucky and before that at Saratoga in uh in the spin away, we're talking about Brad Cox here, who uh, has a pretty fantastic record in the Breeders' Cup with 10 victories from just 38 starters. Yeah, Immersive, I think, deserves to be favored off two straight grade one wins. Off track, bias speed track at Keeneland, though, makes me want to try to beat the favorite. Easily the best performance I've seen yet from a two-year-old filly this year on the dirt with Scottish Lassie last time in the Frisette. She was actually in a key maiden race in her debut. She only ran third at Saratoga, but she was the favorite. I think people know how talented she is. We saw in the Frisette with a powerful nine length win in that grade one race at Aqueduct. Scottish Lassie for me is my top pick. Who's your top long shot? My top long shot is, <coughs> excuse me, is La Cara. For trainer Mark Cassie, this is a daughter of Street Sense, um, was an uh, impressive winner of a maiden special weight at Saratoga, and then recently won the Pocahontas. It took Mark Cassie a while to get his first maiden of uh, his first Breeders' Cup win, but since then he's won a whole bunch. Yeah, Lacara certainly improving. Stakes winner last time at Churchill. I wasn't. Overly impressed with that race, but she's certainly interesting in this field. This is Quick Kick for me. Quick Kick is was in that same uh, key maiden race at Saratoga. In fact, she was the winner of that race over the horses that ran 1-2 in the present next out. Um, she broke terribly in her debut, rallied for third, won that key maiden race. 
Last time she faced a real speed bias at Keeneland and ran a good second behind Immersive. I think she'll have odds in here. Quick kick will be my long shot in the juvenile Phillies. All right, Matt, we're going to head back to the turf, and I want you to tell me your top pick in the juvenile turf Phillies. Yeah, I, I don't think we agree on a lot of these Breeders' Cup races, but I think this might be one of them, Brian, uh, because the Europeans have Lake Victoria coming over from the barn of Aiden O'Brien. This one has just been amazing uh, in her career thus far. Four for four, so a little bit more experience than the Americans, and included in that were two Group 1 races, two of the most important uh, Group 1 races for two-year-old fillies in Europe. Yeah, I, I think we could safely call her the best two-year-old filly, uh, turf filly in, in the world right now. Aiden O'Brien, listen, we're still not sure. The pre-entries have come out, but we're still not completely sure which horses he's bringing over. Hoping to see Lake Victoria. She looks special. As you said, four straight wins, a group three before those two group ones. She's a daughter of Frankel. Miles should be right up her alley. She would probably stand over this field a little bit if she indeed comes over for the juvenile Phillies turf. As my top long shot, I'm going to go with Destino Diora, you went with Brad Cox on dirt. I'm going to go with Brad Cox on the turf a little bit here because this daughter, Bolt Dora, was an impressive, very impressive winner of her debut at Kentucky Downs. That was her first race. Her second race, she got a bad trip early and, and uh, during the race in the uh, Jessamine at uh, Keeneland. She only lost by two noses there. That was her second career race. And uh, for all the trouble to run that well, I think that's Dino Diora will be a live long shot in this one. How about you for your top long shot? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Kilwin, who was trained by Rusty Arnold. Rusty Arnold is looking for his first career uh, Breeders' Cup victory this year. Uh, Kilwin is two for two uh, uh, in her career with a nice win last time at Kentucky Downs in the untappable. And I, I just want to note that I think uh, for both Brian and I, in this long shot category, uh, you know, these are not always horses that will uh, get a victory, but uh, sometimes they do. But often we want to use them uh, in uh, in exotic wagers underneath. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. You're right. And uh, 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 kill win is uh, is it certainly a possibility. I like your picks there. All right. In the next one, we go back to the dirt. Probably the biggest race of Friday. It's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, $2 million. And I think this race is setting up pretty well. I think there's a lot of horses uh, that look very interesting among the favorites. I think there's a lot of horses that look very interesting among the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth choice in here. So let's get right to it. Who's your top pick in this big race? Yeah, I think it's a pretty talented uh, talented bunch, Brian, with some horses that have really turned in some big performances already. Uh, and I'm going with Chancer McPatrick in that category. Boy, he has just looked like a special one to me, a horse that comes running late. He crushed the field in the Champagne recently. Yeah, Chancer McPatrick, uh, I think another one, just like on the juvenile field, is you've, you've touched on a horse who probably deserves to be favored. Having said that, this will be California. This will be two turns. How about McKinsey as the next potential superstar sire? Uh, this, of course, being McKinsey's first crop. Chancer McPatrick, big shot in here. We should say that this uh, mile 16th at Del Mar, the juvenile, the juvenile fillies, the dirt races will both be two turns as will the uh, one mile on the turf there at Del Mar. Matt, my top pick is Jonathan's Way. I'm, I'm a little bit enamored with this Ohio bred, uh, a son of a coma. Uh, he had every reason to lose his debut for trainer Phil Bauer at Saratoga. Got off to a real bad start in that debut at six furlongs and still one for fun. Then he came back and just dominated the field of Churchill Downs in the Iroquois. I like Jonathan's Way. Uh, better than anybody else, and, and I'm hoping he's no better than the third choice in the juvenile. How about your top long shot? My top long shot is uh, Ferocious from the barn of Gustavo Delgato. Uh, this one's going to be a big price. I don't know uh, uh, if uh, this is a win pick, but certainly 
uh, has uh, run well, was a debut winner at Saratoga, and has two second places in grade one since then in the hopeful and the breeder's futurity. Matt, I like that pick. In fact, I came very close to making that same pick as my top long shot. Ferocious had excuses in both the grade one hopeful and the grade one breeder's futurity. Uh, I think he's a very talented horse, and I think he's a danger. That mile 16th out at Del Mar could be right up his alley. Look out for Ferocious. I think he also has to look out for Citizen Bull. This is uh, probably the second Bob Baffert in the field. I, I, I think uh, Gamer will probably get a little bit more play in here, making Citizen Bull something like the fifth choice. So I think he qualifies as a long shot. And Citizen Bull improved when he got two turns last time in the grade one American Pharaoh. Did it pretty easily. He's got tactical speed. He can pass horses. My long shot in the juvenile is Citizen Bull. We have one more race on Friday, Matt. We're rolling right along. Let's get back to the turf for the one mile juvenile turf for the boys on Friday. Who is your top pick, sir? My top pick is Zulu Kingdom for Chad Brown. Uh, Chad Brown has, uh, you know, had a, uh, I don't know if we can say a stranglehold, but he has, you know, come uh, uh, to the Breeders' Cup and, and already has a heck of a lot of uh, Breeders' Cup victories to his credit. Uh, these juvenile turf races for both the boys and the girls are areas where he excels. Zulu Kingdom, three for three, already two stakes victories in the Pilgrim and the with, with Anticipation. I like New Century better, Matt. New Century coming out of a key race for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, the Summer Stakes at Woodbine. Uh, trainer Andrew Balding has this son of Kamiko. Uh, he's a grandson of Kitten's Joy um, on the improve with every single race. I think he's been better when he's gotten to a mile or more. A nice win in England, two starts back, and then he just blew the doors off the field coming down the lane in the uh, uh, summer stakes at Woodbine. He is my top pick in here, the juvenile turf. My top long shot, I'm going back to Japan. It's going to be a little bit of a refrain for me, but uh, I really like what I saw from uh, Satano Carnival and his two races. Now, I should say both of those races were less than a mile. Both of those races came back uh, earlier in the year, June and July. He's been freshened since then. But I liked what I saw. He beat big fields. He did it impressively. He's my long shot. How about you? Yeah, my long shot is for a young trainer, Will Walden, the son of Elliot Walden. Uh, I am I'm really impressed with this young trainer and what he's done with some talented horses, one of them being Minaret Station, who has won two races in a row uh, with a maiden breaker at uh, Indiana down. Sometimes those Kentucky based trainers like to get in those fields at Indiana because uh, you know, they are have the right timing, but he came back to win the bourbon, the grade two at Keeneland uh, in this meeting uh, Minaret station, my long shot. Yeah. I finished with a flourish here at Keeneland last time. It's not. It's a good time to break now as we move from Friday to Saturday, and we're going to talk a little bit about Super Screener, Matt. Um, all these horses, uh, what was the number? 212 horses were pre-entered for these 14 Breeders' Cup races. So I think all the data that my friend Mike Shuddy uh, crunches from over the years uh, is really helpful in getting to know. Uh, yeah, we know the favorites pretty well, but getting to know some of these other horses down the list a little bit that that are really eligible to run good races, whether it be for the wind or for other spots in the exotics. So I, I love the super screener and we wanted to mention it today. Do you have anything to add to, uh, about the super screener, Matt? Oh, absolutely, Brian. I will admit that in preparing for this show, particularly looking for the long shots, I took a look at the super screener. You and I are lucky to have an early preview uh, edition of the super screener. I took a look at what the why the long shots listed for these races were to you know just to see what the super screener had to say. There you go, Matt. Yeah, uh, it, it's out now. The early edition is out now. They're coming out with more bonus material, so don't miss the super screener. It's a uh, very good tool for handicapping and betting on these races. Matt, let's move to Saturday. Nine races on Saturday. Wow. Let's start with the first one. 
Philly and Mare Sprint. I want to say this will be race four on Saturday. Seven furlongs. Think you're on the chalk in this one, Matt. Uh, yeah, I might be. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, trainer uh, Chad Brown has won this. I mean, we think of him as a turf trainer, but he has won this Philly and Mayor sprint three times uh, in his career recently with, uh, uh, oh, geez, the, the, oh, good night, Olive. The name is slipping from my head. Uh, for a minute there. Good night, Olive. And then a number of years back, uh, a favorite of mine, Wavell uh, Avenue. Ways and Means is uh, 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 coming into this race with three wins in a row. He won. She won the Gallant Bloom. She won the test at Saratoga and uh, an allowance race in preparation for this Philly and Mare Sprint, which is seven furlongs. Yeah, since trying Torpedo Anna only once in the Kentucky Oaks, she didn't run badly in the Kentucky Oaks, but since then, she's been uh, uh, dropped down to one turn and she's looked terrific. I think a deserving favorite, but uh, we lost a little bit of speed in, in the Philly and Mare Sprint. And when society is on her game, she's almost unbeatable. I could easily see society going wire to wire in here. She's my top pick. I see we landed on the same long shot. I saw Zeitlos recently win at Keeneland, and she is getting better and better for trainer Steve Asmussen. Yeah, and Brian, I at the seven furlong sprint date uh, distances, I often like the closers, and I like certainly if I'm picking a long shot, it to be a closer, a horse that's running from behind. And for me, uh, Zeitlos fits the bill. Yeah, yeah, she's getting better. This will be a class test for her. I think she's run against a little bit easier, but uh, on the improve, and she will be making up ground. All right, next on the list, Matt, we go to the turf sprint. Whoa, look at that, Matt. We have the same oh, top well, yeah. and the same top uh, long shot. I think this is the only race where we're in unison with our picks. Cogburn for you? Cogburn for me, yeah, Brian. Uh, uh, winner of, th uh, you know, uh, of three races in a row, six out of the last seven, uh, uh, won a turf sprint at Kentucky Downs, won the, the Jiper at, uh, uh, at, in New York. It, that was a really contentious field. Lots of class, lots of victories for Cogburn. Yeah, he, he is the horse to beat for sure. If he runs his race, he'll be tough. I think the internationals uh, will present some issues possibly for him, but Cogburn's certainly the horse to beat. And our top long shot uh, is a Vungu Vungu. Uh, is a Vungu Vungu was a very good five furlong horse in South Africa. Graham Motion got him earlier this year. He came over uh, and uh, 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 got a freshening, uh, started working out at Far Hills and uh showed a real nice win in the colonial downs in his first american race i think we'll get some odds on is vungu vungu and i think he is a, a tough five for one horse hey brian hats off to you you really said that name uh you nailed it uh i i i don't even want to try with uh with that one but yeah i really really like that uh first american start for graham motion i i think this this long shot uh, is going to fit really well in the race and and has got some upside under the, in having joined motions barn yeah i practiced the pronunciation matt you know how well i do with pronunciations is a vungu vungu is fun to say the next race on saturday is the breeders cup this time. for me this is a big one uh torpedo anna has become my favorite horse um in training in fact she's been my favorite horse in training for most of the year now i've been on her bandwagon and i am not getting off now i think she is a special three-year-old filly i think she is one of the best three-year-old fillies we've seen in this century matt torpedo anna facing olders for the first time she's going to be the favorite i don't think she'll be a huge separation from the defending champion uh but uh, for me torpedo anna has proven her class I like her best in the distaff. Yes, uh, certainly. I agree with you, Brian. We have to remember that her only uh, recent defeat was in the Travers against the boys, a narrow loss to Fierceness, who is going to be one of the two favorites in the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic, keeping that in mind. Yeah, but she will be facing older horses for the first time. 
and one of them is last year's distaff winner in idiomatic at the same time i guess as a subplot uh trainer kenny mcpeak of uh torpedo anna is looking for his first win in the breeders cup after 37 tries yeah yeah mcpeak is McPeak is due to win a Breeders' Cup, and I think Torpedo Anna can get it done. Idiomatic, though, a certainly tough, tough top uh, chief among the competition. Matt, uh, I, I just want to say I completely agree with you uh, with your top long shot. I just didn't consider her a long shot. I think awesome result, 7 for 7 by Justify. We'll get that as a pretty clear third choice in here. But if we call her a long shot, she would be my long shot as well. Okay, yeah, it, it, it was hard with uh, some of these long shots trying to figure out what uh, odds they will be because, you know, morning lines are not out. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, that one might be a little on the short side. We, we'll see. I don't know how much all of these Japanese horses are going to be bet, but regardless of that, seven for seven, uh, uh, and even if it's just the third choice. Yeah, she she right. The third choice in here with Torpedo in an idiomatic still could be decent odds. I went candid, candied uh, a little bit longer price. Um, she of course rallied toward Torpedo Anna back at Saratoga. Uh, she also was forced to chase idiomatic early and then make an early move and, and it probably took her out of her game and it spinced her a little bit. I think she could do better than that. She's allowed now to relax early and make one run. So Candied would be my long shot in the distaff. Matt, we're, uh, we're getting there. Uh, let's go to the $5 million Breeders' Cup turf. We have the same top pick. We do. We're going back. We're both going to the veteran Rebels Romance. Uh, you know, what a record on this horse. 21 starts, 14 wins, $9 million in earnings. Uh, last year was probably not the best for Rebels Romance, but to me, it looks like he is back in top form. Great. Uh, Rebels Romance uh, had had a few issues last year. Two years ago, he was uh, the winner of the Breeders' Cup turf at Keeneland. Uh, mile and a half, well, well-traveled, all class. And you're seeing it this year, Rebels Romance, strictly the one to beat the Breeders' Cup turf. Two different long shots, and your long shot was another one that I almost went with. Yeah, I'm sure you almost did. This is a this is a Japanese horse. Brian has wa has run exclusively in Japan, Japan and in Dubai. Uh, has won over ten million dollars in uh, in the career. Hasn't had a win victory, but I think is going to be really nice odds and one to use underneath. Yeah, and he ran third uh, uh, last year. As a, as a long shot as well, and he might be better this year. Uh, my long shot is a three-year-old for Aiden O'Brien. Again, Aiden O'Brien, I'm not 100% sure. We'll see him, but I think Illinois is going to come over. This is a distance-loving distance, distance -loving son of Galileo, and, and sometimes that uh, translates well to a mile and a half over horses here that are not as good at a mile and a half in America. So uh, he's consistent. It's one of the reasons I like him. In fact, he's been in the top three nine out of nine times as Illinois. He's coming off of actually a longer race last time where he won in France. Illinois would be a very interesting long shot for me in the Breeders' Cup turf. All right, Matt, uh, we're going with the order of the races. It's weird not to put this first or last, but in the order of the races, the Breeders' Cup Classic is next. Let's talk Classic. There we are. Interesting. Yep. Uh, that looks like in the classic that you and I are both going with three-year-olds. There's a lot of interesting stories in the classic this year. Three-year-olds uh, uh, versus four-year-olds uh, is one of them. Uh, um, I think it's been a year where we've seen where at least certainly in this country, the three-year-olds have been the star and, and, and we've, we've got two of them here. I think fierceness is at his very, very best right now and let's remember last year he had no trouble traveling to california and winning a breeders cup race yeah if he can if he can show that kind of uh performance in california again certainly fierceness is a big threat in here i, I said he won the race of the year when he just 
barely held up torpedo in in the Travers. Uh, obviously, uh, one of America's very finest horses, a champion last year and going well now this year. But for me, Forever Young just checks all my boxes. He's got some tactical speed. I, I do worry about the break just a little bit with him. Uh, but he's got tactical, tactical speed when he needs it. He's got a good burst of a turn of foot when he needs it. He, he was freshened after a tough campaign that led to a very tough loss in the Kentucky Derby. He easily could have won the 10 furlong Kentucky Derby. Shown class all the way, had a nice prep to come back. I think he'll love 10 furlongs. I have full uh, trust in his trainer. I actually think he's the best three-year-old dirt horse in the world, but we're, we're going to find out with our two top picks, throw in City of Troy, trying dirt for the first time. An interesting classic. How about the long shots? Yeah, long shots. I am going with uh, Sierra Leone. He, he's not going to be a big, long, long shot, but he's going to be a lot higher price than we've been getting on him recently when he's been running against three-year-olds and coming up and getting a piece of all of these big races. So why not Sierra Leone at a better price getting a piece in the Classic? Yeah, a better price for sure. Uh, let's not forget that Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was the favorite in the Travers. We didn't necessarily expect it. He was the favorite in the Travers and ran a good third behind Fierceness and Torpedo Anna. Certainly a uh, a big shot to get a piece again, Sierra Leone for sure. Uh, National Treasure, we thought, could go to the Classic at some point. He's not. Uh, Sees the Grey, we thought, could go to the Classic. And he's not. So suddenly there's a little less speed in here. And Arthur's ride is a talented speed horse. There's there's still some speed in here, fierceness, for instance. But fierceness might like to sit off the lead. And if everybody sits off the lead just a little bit, and Arthur's ride is able to cruise, this is a dangerous, talented gray runner on the lead in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He'll be my Breeders' Cup Classic long shot. All right, Matt, we have four more to go. Let's Ooh. keep rolling. Wow, the Philly and Mare Turf. This is a mile three-eighths. They change the distance pretty much every year depending on the track. This one is a longer version of the Philly and Mare Turf. So a mile and three-eighths, it's actually three turns, as will the Breeders' Cup turf be. And I tell you what, uh, I, I, I mentioned that Aiden O'Brien, I'm just not exactly sure which ones are going to run, which ones are going to come over off of all his pre-entries. So I could have easily went with content as my top pick, but I'm just not 100% sure of her. Warlike Goddess, I expect a good pace, 11 furlongs. I think Warlike Goddess is due to win one of these, Matt. She's my top pick. Yeah, I can't blame you. I, I certainly wouldn't mind seeing more like uh, Goddess uh, close out her career with a win in the Breeders' Cup again. Uh, I'm going with a horse. Uh, I probably got a long shot in both of my positions here. I'm going with uh, Cinderella's Dream. Cinderella's Dream uh, is a, is a three-year-old, the a winner of the Saratoga Oaks, a winner of the Belmont Oaks for Charlie Appleby. Uh, Charlie Appleby's record in the Breeders' Cup, Brian, 20 starters, 10 wins. Yeah, absolutely. Appleby, go Dolphin. I've actually heard some people talking about Cinderella's dream, even though she's a three-year-old going against older in this Philly Mare turf, a dangerous horse. I see that her top long shots come out of the same race, Matt. Last time, full count Felicia wired the field in the EP Taylor, and Moira was the one trying to run her down. Yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, your long shot from the race before Arthur's ride, getting loose on the lead. Hey, we've seen full count Felicia get loose on the lead and win big races before. It's going to be tougher in this one, but she's going to be a big price. You know, I really like full count Felicia. The, the, she's become really, really good at the right time. But 11 furlongs with all these good horses, I, I just couldn't talk myself into her staying the trip. Moira, on the other hand, she's been knocking on the door at a lot of big races. She always runs her race. I think she's good at 9, 10, 11 furlongs. Moira, for me, as my top long shot in the Philly and Mare Turf. All right, Matt, uh, we're going to switch gears from the Philly and Mare Turf at 11 furlongs down to the Breeders' Cup sprint on the dirt. Six furlongs, and we have the same top pick in here. 
We do, and and I and why not, Brian? This one is just in wonderful form right now, heading to the Breeders' Cup uh, with four victories in a row, four for four this year, including the Grade One Forgo and the Nayrud, uh in New York. Yeah, uh, Mullick and I like to. We saw them together at Saratoga. Uh, just getting better and better for uh, trainer Rudolph Brissett. And uh, right now, I think he's the best sprinter in America. We'll see if that's proven true. Awful shame about the chosen Vron not being able to run uh, because of uh, the way he walks or canters a little bit. A uh, vet decided to scratch him, even though his trainer said that's just how he is and he's 100% healthy. So, boo. On that decision, we would love to see the chosen Vron in this race. Our top long shots, Matt, we went a different way. You went speed. I went with a rally. I did. I went with speed. I went with a, with a local horse for uh, trainer Dan Blacker, was the recent winner of the Santa Anita Sprint. Yeah, straight no chaser, dangerous, talented remake, talented horse, well-traveled horse, classy horse, Proven against classy sprinters. I think he will be running. He's Japanese based. I think he will be running down the lane in the Breeders' Cup sprint. Next, Matt, we have the Breeders' Cup mile. We have all kinds of different options in here. We have all kinds of different picks in here. Yeah, we certainly do. And, and the mile uh, always brings in one of the strongest fields, it usually brings in some of the strongest Europeans. And, and, and we are certainly seeing them in here, but I'm going with uh, Carl Spackler who has proven himself at this point to be the best American turf course tor turf horse, in my opinion, regardless of distance, but he is a mile uh, specialist and comes in with three wins in a row. Uh, in the turf mile at Keeneland and the four star Dave at Saratoga. And for me, I, I fear the Europeans at a mile on turf. And uh, Port of Futuna is just a wonderful filly. She was a good two year old filly, came over here last year, ran second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Phillies. Uh, she's gotten better and better this year. A really, really nice three year old who is consistent, come here before and run well. I like Port of Futuna best in the Breeders' Cup mile. I uh, you, you mentioned Carl Spackler is the best of the Americans at a mile, and I'm not sure because both of the horses I considered for the long shot in here, I don't know. I think they could beat Carl Spackler. Um, more, than, uh, more than pretty uh, is getting better and better as a rallier. I thought about him, but I went with another filly or another mare in this case, Gina Romantica. I think she loves firm turf. Uh, she's getting really good. I was very impressed with her win last time at Keeneland. Pina Romantica ran well in the Breeders' Cup mile last year at Santa Anita. I expect her to run very well at Del Mar this year. Yeah, she certainly loves uh, running at Keeneland uh, for sure, uh, Brian. I'm going with uh, Johannes, a, a, a local horse, four-year-old for trainer Tim Yachtin, comes to the race having won four in a row, seven out of the last eight, including the grade one shoemaker and a couple of other grade twos. Yeah, Johannes, the local and a very good local, his only career turf loss. Uh, he had an excuse here at Churchill Downs. Johannes is a nice horse who could win the Breeders' Cup mile. Uh, it wasn't originally, I believe, scheduled to be the last race, but now we know the Dirt Mile will be the last of all 14 Breeders' Cup races, the final race, Breeders' Cup race on Saturday at Del Mar. And Matt, this is a wide open race, and I, I think you can see that with our picks here. Uh, we left some big horses completely off the list. Who's your top pick? Yeah, we sure did. This is a really, really good field for the Dirt Mile, maybe one of the best uh, in the uh, – uh, relatively short history of uh, Dirt Mile. I am going with uh, Domestic Product, and, uh, who comes from the barn of uh, of Chad Brown. Uh, very nice victories in the uh, in the Jerkins and the Dwyer coming up to this race. Yeah, and and that could be a very good pick in in that coming off the pace, and there could be a lot of speed in here especially if National Treasure is in the field. I think National Treasure is the favorite if he's in the field. He was pre-entered, but there is some talk because he hasn't had a workout since the California crown almost four weeks ago. 
uh, that some people are concerned he won't be in there. We'll see. We have no reason to believe he won't be. And if he's in and sees the grays in, should be a solid early pace, which helps your top pick domestic product. I'm not sure it helps my top pick Mufasa, but I am sticking with this king of the jungle, Matt. Uh, came from South America where he was really good at a mile. Lots of wins down there on dirt. And he has improved with each start in America. He broke 120. Uh, at Colonial Downs, seven furlongs on the dirt there, 119 and change, which you see only once about a decade. Uh, then he came back with an easy win in the Vosburg. I, I just feel like Mufasa could be the best horse in a very tough race. How about your top long shot? Yeah, it is a very tough race. And you mentioned Seize the Gray. Uh, I was seriously considering that horse because uh, I guess originally we maybe both of us thought that uh, trainer D. Wayne Lucas would go for the more glamour uh, a race and go in the classic. So uh, um, I, I think he made the best choice with Seize the Gray in the dirt mile. He's going to be tough uh, in there, uh, Brian. But uh, my my long shot is going to be Saudi Crown. Saudi Crown is a horse that I have liked throughout his career. A little bit lightly raced for Brad Cox. Certainly, I think, is going to get overlooked in a, a little bit here. Has one race back. Had a nice return uh, victory uh, in preparation for uh, the Dirt Mile. Saudi Crown's my long shot. Yeah, talented horse could win. There's a bunch of them in the race. Um, your top pick was domestic product from off the pace. My top long shot is going to be post time from off the pace. If if that uh, really fast pace develops, I'm looking for a horse like domestic product or post time. Post time, very consistent. I think he proved himself this spring and summer in New York against quality competition. Last time he got a confidence builder at Laurel, his home base. Post time for trainer Brittany Russell will be my top long shot in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, Matt. That's 14 of them. Our top pick, our top long shot for each. I hope that helps everybody viewing today uh, as we get ready to the Breeders' Cup. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, use this information. Use the uh, pre-entry PPs. Start thinking about your wagers. I think we'll be back next week um, with uh, another Breeders' Cup Horse Center. Uh, show for you. Brian and I will take the next week to think about some of the kind of wagers that uh, we're going to concentrate on because you can't bet them all in the Breeders' Cup, Brian. So I'll see you next week. Yeah, we're going to look at the biggest races more in depth next week. We will have suggested wagers for you, as you always ask for. We can't wait. Until then, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Breeders' Cup, right here on Horse Center. See you then.